Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk about what's new in Fusion for May 2024. Now, I know when what's new content comes out, half of you are probably excited about new features, and the other half are worried about what's not going to work. So in this video, we're going to cover just some of the updates, not everything, but these are the ones that I think are, are the most impactful. So first, in the design workspace, we have a Solid Sweep. Solid Sweep is a new option inside of our Sweep tool that allows us to use a solid body as the sweep profile. This is great because now what we can do is take a solid body along a path and cut that away from our design. Now, this opens up a few different types of geometries that we can create, and this is great because this is a feature that's been in other CAD programs for quite a while. Keep in mind that when we are using the Solid Sweep tool, we don't have things like a guide surface or a guide rail. We only have a single path. This works best when the solid body is round, but it's not required that it is round. Next, we're going to take a look at rounded shell. Now, the shell tool has obviously been around for a while, but now we have a new option called rounded shell. Now, anytime that we have an internal edge on the outside of our part, as we thicken that inward, in this case, if we go to five millimeters, what we're going to get is a five millimeter radius. Now, this is great because this helps us keep our consistent wall thickness, but it does not apply to sharp external corners, only those internal edges. What this means is that we would still need to go around and on those external corners, apply a fillet before we thicken. This is easy enough to do before the shell feature by simply selecting the edges that we want to add a fillet to. In this case, if we add five millimeters, we should get a nice sharp corner on the inside of our shell. So another great addition, something that will make a difference if you're using consistent wall thickness parts, creating plastic parts, or just generally using the shell tool in your day-to-day -day workflow. Next is something that I had high hopes for, but honestly doesn't work great in practice. And this is the multi-patch tool. The patch tool has been around. Obviously it's a staple of the service tool set, but for this update in May 2024, we now have the ability to select multiple edges or profiles and patch them all at the same time. So instead of having four patch features in our timeline, we now have a single one. Now, however, where this falls a bit short is it only really works for those planar edges. If I use these two edges here, for example, it doesn't work. So for whatever reason, I think that this tool is great, but it's not quite there yet. Hopefully it'll get an update in the near future. Next, we're going to move into the drawing workspace. Now, if you create detailed drawings, you'll know that if you need to override a tolerance, generally a tolerance is in a note in the title block, you need to double click a dimension, you need to enable tolerances, and then you need to add the value here. Now, this can be time consuming, especially if there are a large number of dimensions on your print and you need to modify them. Well, new for the May release of 2024, we have a match dimension option. What this allows us to do is select a source dimension and apply that tolerance value to any other dimension we click on. Keep in mind that this is not linked. If we go back and we make an adjustment to the original tolerance value, it won't update all of the other dimensions, but we can select it and we can rerun that match dimension tool by simply applying those to everything that we had to click. Now, this is a much quicker workflow than double clicking on every dimension that we want to change. There are a couple of other updates to drawings. It's not something that we're going to cover in this, but if you want to see what's new, you can always go to your help menu and go to what's new or check the link in the description below, which will take you to the Autodesk blog. Next, we're going to move into the manufacturer workspace. Now, this is something I don't generally cover on this channel. I do have plans to in the near future, but I do create a lot of content for cam and for detailed drawings in other locations. And what we're going to talk about in the next couple of sections here are going to be updates to milling as well as turning. The first update is to the facing tool. There is a new option for spiral linking, and this is available when we go to our passes section, and it's called order for shorter links. Now, this is only available if you use climb or conventional milling. If you have both ways turned on, it will not work. But what this does is it changes the linking between the end motions. And the reason it only works for climb and conventional is because the standard facing tool simply loops around and cuts the other direction. Now, why does this matter? Well, when we take a look at the machining properties, in this case, the machining time, we can see that the new option now has a rapid movement of three seconds and a total feed time of three minutes and 19 seconds. Now, if we compare that to the standard one, 
you can see that there is no rapid time, but the total feed time is three minutes and 47 seconds. Now, it might not seem like a lot to save 25 to 27 seconds, but for every toolpath or every facing operation, that can save a good bit of time, especially if you're using a more manufacturing approach where we're machining multiple parts. So those options are great. And one of the other things that has been updated in milling is the addition of a position option where we can preview the machine. Now in the past, you could preview the machine motion by going into the machine builder, but now we have the option to use these sliders in this dialog to check the position of the machine and make sure that we do have access to machine every area of our part. Now, this is a nice addition and generally it'll be helpful to check things like XY travel clearances if you're machining a large part or if you have a number of workstations on a mill. So that's a nice update for 2024, but there are a couple of additional updates in the turning section that we want to take a look at. The first of which is updates to the threading toolpath. Now threading has been something that honestly in the past is kind of a pain. You have to do a lot of work to figure out where it's going to start and where it's going to end. And now we have the option of a front and back plane that can be dragged and dictate where the toolpath is going to start and end. This is a great option that allows for this Z-axis confinement. We can toggle this off if we don't want to use it. And this is generally how we would deal with it in the past by using things like extensions before and after that toolpath. But I think that this is a great option. And another option in the passes section is we now have the option to dictate the depth of our first pass. So if you're cutting threads into harder materials, say you're using a steel material, then this is nice because now you can have a much smaller initial cut and you don't have to worry as much about where on the tool. And then the subsequent cuts will be deeper based on the other settings for your toolpath. The next thing that we want to talk about is the addition of more part handling. Now, in the past, we could use the subspindle grab and subspindle return to grab onto our part, pull it to a subspindle, and then machine the backside of our part. The bar pull is a little bit different. Now, the bar pull will allow us to extend the part outside of the main spindle, and it does this by bringing a subspindle in, grabbing it, pulling it out a set distance, releasing it, and then it's still in our main spindle. Now, the reason you might do this is because you may have sections on a part that are thin or fragile, and machining them all while supporting it on the very end could potentially deform the part. So using this is pretty straightforward. We can determine whether or not we want to use a new WCS offset or simply compensate for the toolpath's movement. And what this means is that all of our Z values are going to change by one inch. We also have the option to dictate the feed rate, how fast we want this to happen, and whether or not we want to stop or synchronize the sub and the main spindle. Now, by adding this, essentially what we're doing, again, is we're going to be extending or moving the part one inch further out of that main spindle. It's not something that we're generally going to see when we're taking a look at it here in Fusion, so it's something that you need to use very carefully. The last thing that I want to take a look at is an update to our profile finishing. Now, profile finishing now has a turning mode option for face profiling, and this is great because now we can face or profile the end of our parts, but in addition to that, we now see that the tool path can actually follow along multiple faces. And what I mean by this is as we bring our tool in, as it goes and traverses around this curved section and it gets to that sharp break edge, what it's gonna do is it's gonna continue to traverse along that and then go along the straight edge and then the rounded edge here as well. What would typically happen in the past is we may either need to focus on specific areas individually or potentially have it retract to the save Z distance and engage the stock again, making us spend a lot more time machining than we really needed to. So this is a great update for the turning tool paths inside of the May 2024 update. Now, as I mentioned, we are not covering everything that Fusion has to offer in this May update. Make sure that you do go to the help menu and check on what's new or the link in the description. If you have any questions on anything you saw here or you wanna see more on some of the other features that have been updated, please leave a comment. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.